The flogcast may occasionally contain explicit content that makes it not safe for work or for minors. It also doesn't provide an excuse to just use the same words on Bay 13. Normal big footy rules still apply. <laughs> So this is the Vlogcast for round 23, the final round of the season. The shit dumper from Richmond Starburns is here. And I'm joined by the leader of the Geelong Cheer Squad, Teach. We've upgraded the um, steamboat to a... Um, uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> to a hydrofoil? Yes, 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 yes. We've updated oh. the steamer to a hydrofoil. And so it's no longer toot-toot, it's... <laughs> Awkward. Why are you so unfunny, Teach? <laughs> you should be more funny, Teach. I'll be funnier later. <laughs> Wait. We've heard just about everyone else's voices, but we will go through it anyway. We do have the man who was most happy with the news of Adam Schneider's retirement from St Kilda Cookson. In the great words of a West Coast Eagles supporter, Freo can chat on a bowl of dicks. <laughs> the number one fan of Hawthorne's Power Ranger, Guernsey Penal. Hi there. The bravest supporter of the bravest club ever, Collingwood Morgan Ashley. Suck shit, Teach. We sunk your battleship. <laughs> Get fucked, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> And to go toe to toe with the tomboy deal hater Morgs, we have a tomboy deal lover in Go You Pups. Soft flogs. Woof. How's the bath water tasting? <laughs> Lol, Northy. But we will add a third this week. Goo, tears, or bath water? Who's got what? I've got tears. <laughs> you think Tom Boyd's overpaid, but boy, he's got nothing on that fat, useless cunt called Wayne Rooney. Kick a go, you prick. <laughs> I've got goo for Daniel Menzel on his comeback. He was just absolutely sensational. But then I've got tears for the rest of the team and how fucking shit they were. That concerning. Uh, it's not just... I liked Stevie J's game. Might have been his last for Geelong. Oh, no. no, he didn't take suspended. Didn't. Unless he's getting dropped. You couldn't do that. Who wants to go next? I've got goo. I've got heaps of goo. We so have... I was like, shut up, you. Bathwater goo? Yeah, okay, bathwater goo. So I'm sitting up at level three, just down in a couple of, you know, mid shanks or whatever they're doing. And Is this going to be long when he posts? <laughs> yeah, maybe. So I come Bond. Bond Bont robes are perfectly timed cut from Goldstein straight on Bont. Bont like shrugs off three tackles, kicks at the stringer. Stringer shrugs off another two tackles, gets a handball off the kick. Goal. It was a good goal. North had like no response. That was just like awesome. Well, that's the kind of thing that only youth can bring. Only youth can kick Bit of flair and excitement. Bit of flair, bit of run, bit of genuine energy, you know? The only player who gives run to North is Boomer. <laughs> And he only runs Goldwood. He doesn't run the other way. Yes. Who else is gone? Well, I've got some goo for Hadouken's thread about Rockcliffe because <laughs> never has it been more true than on the weekend where he racks up 45 touches and the team gets touched up by, you know, 72 points. And most of those 45 uh, touches, you know, went sideways. He had 10 clangers, I think. And uh, Since, what, 2009 or something? The most this year previously, I think, had been eight. And the all-time record, I think, is 11 so he went close and it wasn't nearly as effective as uh, Liam Shields who had 34 disposals and was very effective going forward with them high disposal efficiency kicked the goal you know lots of inside 50s not like Mr. Rockliffe there listen to him he's got goo for Rockliffe but he's got no goo for his own team I've got goo for the Rockliffe thread not Rockliffe himself and I've I've just spilled some goo for Shields as well I was a bit unprepared because I assumed Teach was going to take Menzel and I would second that goo because it was great but other than that I've got goo for Ben Lennon the rising star for this week because if Morgs can do oh, it oh yeah so how far, good was he he had, a, he had a fantastic game in the wet absolutely mm-hmm. and it's been frustrating that he only played one game before about round 15 because Hardwick's no youth policy but he's in there and he's established and it's good 
Yeah, and Mendel's story was great. But let's mm. go to... Hey, I have goo. Oh, I forgot Stop about you. Me. Yes, okay, so I'll have three lots of goo then. So in three, bronze medal... Three lots of goo. Yeah, well, you were that fucking bad. I've got any, any for Fasolo this week? Yeah, we, we were no, none cheap. for the Prince of Perth, sorry. <clears throat> I have three lots of goo and firstly an apology to Braden Maynard, who I did call a potato last week and played a very good game this week. You did. Three goos and one apology. Yep, just getting it out of the way. Oh, they can all just have gold medals. Our three bulls in the midfield... Greenwood, Adams, and Dugowie. Fantastic. They were on Friday night. Um, oh, yeah, they, Greenwood right. was I shut rip, up. Every week. Shut up. <laughs> I'm agreeing with you. I don't want you to. You can look after um, yourself. I'll get back yeah, in. I don't need you to white knight me, man. So <laughs> Greenwood had his best game for us. He was great. Shut down Selwood. And yeah, they were fantastic. It wasn't just us relying on our better players who haven't even been that good this year. And Swan only played a half. So yeah, it was good to see. Oh, and Menzel Selwood. was fantastic. And it was really, really nice story. Selwood was shit though like is there any coincidence to the fact that you know the AFL brings in their head ducking rule and all of a sudden Selwood is now 50% less effective he's gone from being maybe danger field esque last year now he's Rockcliffe esque he's a downhill skier he just he doesn't, but he doesn't even get the, the amount of disposals of Rock, as Rockcliffe no 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 but that's only because Geelong actually try and play football instead of pad their stats but he's not winning effective disposals obviously because if you have a look uh... at their disposal numbers you can tell they're not padding their stats especially the youth ones oh. it's a trip Premiership player, and you can all go and get fucked. And I got nothing. So that was the laziest defence ever. Only pads. Selwood uses are maxi pads for his forehead, and okay. maxi pads for his giant fucking vagina because the way he plays football is very girly. That's I don't very know if I'm offended by that, but yeah, you should be. I should be because I wouldn't. I wouldn't play football that fucking poorly. Lift. <laughs> That's an insult to women. It is an insult to women. Yes, it is, Pino. It's an insult to women. Yeah, Subaru is not happy with you. Oh, well, I'm sure Divi Blues will be along shortly. Oh. Let's stay on that game. I was going to go to the dogs game first, no, but we'll stay, on, we'll stay on So Brave. Oh, So Brave. Wasn't it nice, Teach? I was not expecting that. Cookie told me that we'd win, and I told him that we wouldn't. Oh, so... you obviously weren't looking at the Mystic Dildo then. <laughs> no, no. I was looking at the Mystic Beers. No, I just had flashbacks from the last time I drank at the football. Dildo. This is the story of our season. It's like... Like it's almost like you're going to deliver. You win a number of games in a row, and then you serve up a huge amount of shit. That sounds exactly like our season. Like it yeah, was yeah. Well, I mean, so but, you know, good on Collingwood for winning because no, they, but like we they, they were so much like, they were so much better than us. So they like, uh, it was like that we had absolute, we had something to play for, and you didn't. It was strange, like because having our captain come out and say, "Hey, you didn't mean anything," you wouldn't have expected them to turn that around. Imagine your team needs to win to play finals and you serve up that fucking load of shit that Geelong surfed up. How embarrassed would you be to be a Geelong supporter? Well, Penal's right because I turned off at half time and I watched. Uh... Oh, so you didn't go to the game. So it was like Enright no, 300 what? then with all the fucking Geelong supporters streaming out. I tell you, he looked really concerning though. The fat piece oh, of shit called Tom, Tom Hawkins. Hawkins. He, was... Oh, he, was, he was fucking horrible. He was fucking hopeless. He was. <laughs> Didn't the fucking he had like three dream team or whatever the ranking points they flash points. up on at, at TV? He had three at half time and like watching the names scroll across the bottom and there's like some Collingwood player flashes up and he's got four to his name and be like, gee, four, that's really bad. And then the next one is fucking Tom Hawkins come across and then he's on three. It's like, oh, that's even worse. Oh, he was the biggest fattest potato on the field. <laughs> he played like an actual cow. Like seriously, you get a fucking cow and it's do better than a fat fuck. I have a theory on why. Geelong were bad because they're old as fuck well they're old and their youth is concerning and it was very very concerning apart from like Menzel was their best young player and he hasn't played in four years but I think morale is shot because all the spiritual leaders are getting shoved out the door and yep. Stevie J's about to leave Kelly's Stevie gone. J's gonna go and yeah. Kelly's See. probably gonna follow and well Bartel's, yeah, probably... Bartel's cooked Bartel's cooked but he's gonna get another year from the sound of things Enright well does he want to go on maybe not Bonigan's well, old Stokes gone. All the young players would be devastated because they're like, it doesn't matter what I do. I can be a 300-game veteran and legend of this club, but they're still going to shaft me like they shafted Chappie and they're about to shaft Jono and Kelly and all these other we guys. We didn't shaft anyone, you fucking So kid. All the young players would be like, I don't want to fucking play at Geelong. I've got to get out of here. And that's why Dangerfield's coming to Hawthorne because, you know, no one wants oh, to play for Geelong. Go. Here we go. Oh. Uh, you fucking wanker. Well, the man raises some good points. 
he does. You've got no counter argument, Tej. You just want to change the subject. Nah, we all know we're shit and we're rebuilding, but we're still the only team in the AFL never to finish lower than 12th. Well, I think we can do something about that next year. I think That's you'll be breaking crazy. that record very soon. Oh, no, 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 no. I'd Records are meant to be broken. Once fucking Jono gets shafted and you've got spuds like Smets getting regular games, <laughs> oh, it's going to be delicious. It'll be 110 every week. We're on the way back. We're on the way back. <laughs> Uh, this is like by Hollywood, mate. You're not on the way back anywhere. You're on the way fucking back down. You're on the way back, back to down. being the handbag, as Joffa pointed out on Friday. <laughs> well, you can all go and get fucked. <laughs> Speaking of 12th, Geelong can still finish 12th this year. All they got to do is just lose. <laughs> and Aaron, Jado, yes. Collingwood oh, and Fort wins. All of those three things can happen because Collingwood are playing Essendon. 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 GWS are playing Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah, and had... Port are playing Peel Thunder. <laughs> Geelong are playing Adelaide Crows. At least I'll get pick seven or pick eight to piss off for uh, what? Henderson? Oh, they'll they'll yeah. trade for some randoms and kill the spot again and we'll just um, struggle draft pick, it. Pick seven for Henderson is massive overs. I look forward to laughing at Geelong for another trade period. I could see that happening, yes. Or they draft the next Nokia Cockatoo or Kane Tanace. <laughs> they draft the next Billy Smets. Billy Smets. Move on, you fucking shitheads. I just want to know why Scott took Walker off when Fat Porkins was so much worse. Do you not trust your youth either? Oh, Walker's of the fucking spot. Yeah, well, he was not any worse than Tom or Pork. He got more than three Dream Team points. Well, the whole team were fucking useless, so what do you do? Take them all off. Yeah, should have put me on. I would have done better because I just. You would have had to attend the game though, which you didn't. I I would have just belted people. Well, that doesn't sound very good. No, but that's what you have to do when you're. When you're not good at football. You'd get a game at Hawthorne, maybe. (laughs) Yes, well, we know you love a good snipe at Hawthorne and you defend them vehemently. We just love blokes who belt other blokes, you know? (laughs) Or just blokes that love other blokes. (laughs) <laughs> Let's move on and, well, Morgs has had her goo. Now have some tears, Morgs, because we are going to drink some bath water. Oh all God, of us are going to drink some bath water with goo, you pups. This is what I want you to do. Drink it all up. Splash it around. I'll be the one laughing in the end. <laughs> Lol North. Is this I your don't support Lol North. Fucking This is your motherhood instinct coming out, is it? What are you implying, Teach? <laughs> well, you just want to, you know, <laughs> buy infants and make them drink their bath water. Well, she does like them young because she hates North's language. Of you, but yes, goo you pups. Yes, <laughs> well, yeah, that game was just uh, the first third of that game was just horrible. Like, North got off to a fast start, and if they kicked straight, they could have been four or five goals up. So, what you're saying and is then, that North Melbourne choked? Well, sort of. I think they, they pulled a lot the north goal. a little bit, but we got our game going just before half time, and it really opened up, and North just couldn't contain us afterwards. And yeah, that last quarter was just awesome. Just Bont and Pally and Stringer just running a mark. Setting all the goals up. I must admit the in junk time. No, no, no. No, they want no. They want us to game. It wasn't junk time. Junk time would be when Wait kicked his goals. <laughs> hey, there's no such thing as junk time in the X's. <laughs> no such thing. What's Eddie's nickname again? Junk time, junk time Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> no longer junk time Eddie. It is now Gun X. Yeah, Fuck it, it off into something. His, his nickname is now Ready Eddie Go. That's perfect. <laughs> Goldstein just tore Zane Cordy a new asshole. I mean, really? You gotta play a fucking rock. I'm I mean, shocked to be sitting here. Dogs are going to be fucked at <laughs> the finals going into Vada Rockman. I mean, Rocks win finals. Correct. We, 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 we would what? absolutely have never won the 2010 grand final if we didn't have a I mean, Brad Ottens, the Rockman. Only reason we won it. Clark Keating. Frio I mean, rocked Sandilands against fucking Bailey and lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's ba- 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 Bailey's a good Ruckman. He was just injury prone. Yeah, he's no Sandilands, but, you know, the fact that we played Bailey and had someone to compete was they why still, we won that grand final. And I still had Hale and they had fucking midfielders who could shark mm-hmm. Sandilands on stabs, but a proper Rockman wins you finals. I mean, yeah, first time we there? had a Rockman no. in 20 years, we won a grand final. Uh, Jolly. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Remember Clark Keating at Brisbane. No, he was, that was a star studded team, though. Oh, I've got to say, he was competing Goldstein. against McKee. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to say, about Goldstein, Rothhead did play against Goldstein nearly the whole game, and he did a pretty good job on him. 
like we're playing rough head really warriors at Rock now. And I thought rough head's <laughs> defensive job on Goldstein, like not letting him get many touches around the ground, was influential in um us uh, drinking the bar floor in the game. So. Boomer had no one to run past for a handball. He only did that once, I think. Boomer think Sean, Sean Higgins. No, 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 he he takes, he's a receiver. Receives. He receives. Oh. Yeah, Sean Higgins was better in the receiving department than Boomer. He yeah. was. Higgins had a pretty good game actually. He was one of yeah, North's best. Three. Pretty good all year. Higgins has been an actual solid pickup. I mean, we gave Higgins, North shit on a bit. He did his Higgins job. Higgins really stands out. He really stands H- out at North because they don't have too many players like him. No one who can run. Yeah, pretty much. He's just got a good football brain. He knows where, what positions to run to and, you know, how to get on the end of it and kick goals. But he can actually defend as well and not like fucking Boomer. Higgins and Barco are actually two players who had talent, who've gone to clubs and they've had a clear run with injury. And because of it, they've actually looked really, really good. Yeah, it shows There's you There's a few Bar- players like that. Well, Va- Varko just wasn't trying at Geelong because he didn't want to become a Geelong club legend and then get the dagger <laughs> in the back. The when he gets team. to another club, he's actually going to try. I, can, I am, shut the fuck up, Pony. You, you get... I, I have not said enough how much I've enjoyed having Varko as calling the player. I never wanted that man, and I have been super impressed. <laughs> Got to say something about North crowd. I think that was North's biggest home crowd for the whole year. It was like 37,500. Oh, that would be North's biggest home crowd this century. Yeah, I, I think they only got maybe 32 against Hawthorne. Yeah, but Hawthorne's an interstate yeah. team, so it can't really yeah. And they got bogger all against Essendon also, but Essendon was shit. Yeah. <laughs> and they got spooked by the big crowd. Possibly. Northeast oh. can't come out to play. Good practice for us in September. <laughs> might be back there against the Crows with a big crowd. Possibly. Well, it looks, it looks like it might end up like that. Well, if Richmond win, then, yeah, we definitely will probably finish sixth because yep. it's unlikely Sydney will drop the game against Dog. You could still catch us on percentage because you're playing the hopeless Brian. Maybe, but well, our biggest win this year was against Melbourne. But you know, it's interstate, Brian and we can't. It's interstate, and we can't win interstate, as everyone says. So bring just, Brisbane back into it. Just rest a few players. Rest eleven players for your trip interstate. It's the new thing these days. No, just let Rockcliffe get as much of the ball as he wants, and he'll give it back to you. <laughs> it's Rockcliffe 100 possessions. Anything else on North versus the Doggies? It was a good game to watch after the initial sluggishness. It was a good game to watch after three quarter time because it's what 12 goals in three quarters and then 12 goals in the last quarter or something like that second half of the third quarter was decent but nothing else on that yeah oh didn't even melt Ooh, yeah. didn't even melt yeah well but i was about to mention before we moved on so much for the dogs not having beaten anyone in however long it is <laughs> well but i said to you the week before i was asking a question i wasn't stating anything i said they haven't beaten anyone since may now they have they've been north. Gotta, gotta they say, north you know how i gave richmond a whack last week and you divvied my thread about <laughs> the puffer fish one. Yeah. How you say this? Yeah, but Rich, yeah, but Richmond fans all over the main board and Richo on the bay. They've like oh, they've been you. amping this. No, they've been amping this agenda up that the dogs haven't beaten anyone because we bet everyone in the first five weeks when our fixture was at the toughest of the season. You did like, reverse Collingwood. Like, like, uh, we bet everyone in the first five weeks too. Fuck off. Yeah, but you didn't play anyone good. Yeah, We're like, like we good. played we played top eight teams in the first seven weeks apart from Sydney. Here, here comes the. Milk. I'm, I'm with you. Shut up, Richo, you fucking idiot. Richo's Enjoy backing me. you in that thread. Like, he's no. your only friend in that you don't thread. don't need a white knight. Go away. <laughs> Shut no. up, Morgs. Morgs is the I'm only white knight around here. Oh, I'm not. Fucking idiot, North. If we call her a North white knight enough, JB's going to call her for money soon. <laughs> I already bought the raffle ticket last week. Fuck off. Stop calling. <laughs> and, and the Kanye turned Yeah, and did you win? No. Yeah, I wonder who was walking away with a new fucking car or whatever. Tarrant, I think. Robbie Tarrant. Was, <laughs> he signed the deal last week. He got it. Speaking of people fucking saying things, last week Penal got a bit silly and said it was West Coast flag to lose and all kinds of hysterical, teary goo. What happened? <laughs> Teary. So teary. Yeah, come so on, soft. Penal. Tell us what happened. Oh, no, how, no, how, no. Did, how did you get this prediction wrong when you like, were into your mystic dildo, Penal? This game doesn't mean anything. They're still going to finish second on the ladder unless they lose to St Kilda in they Perth. They could have which... finished top. Well, they, they're not going to. And they're going to, you know, play their main finals contender in week one on their home turf. Now, the Eagles, now, if they win that game on their home turf, well, then they, you know, they're still flag favourites. And even now, because the fact that that game against Hawthorne will be in Perth, they're still flag favourites now, in my opinion. They're like hodgepodge no, every not. week. Well, who do you think of flag favourites fucking Richmond? <laughs> well, tell you what, if, if Richmond win next 
next week against North, and then they finish fifth and get the home final again against North. Richmond should be flag favourites because You're if, an idiot. <laughs> if Richmond have a dream run to the grand final, assuming Hawthorne beats West Coast in You're the... You're forgetting uh, the number one rule. They can't win a final. But they will win a final against North or some other shit team if they ha- that they have to play. Well, their dream they have run a horrible was... record against North. Their dream run last Yeah, but we haven't week. played them at the MCG in like six years. North haven't played at the MCG in six years. Yeah, that's why that's cool. they haven't no, played in front of a crowd of more than 38,000. Oh, no, they did. They lost to Collingwood. <laughs> Once again, stage fright. But yeah, West Coast got blown out of the water. Let's go back to the game. The Krogo stick was bouncing high. Yeah, take nothing away from Adelaide. They were really good. It's been bouncing high for weeks now. <laughs> it was happier than Matthew Yench before he got pulled over. <laughs> he got the highest score of any West Co- of any Crows player this weekend. Yes. Yes, he did. He got the high score. He's been drinking something other than bath water. But no, they were impressive. Like everything they did, they did right. And even though Geelong lost on the Friday and sealed their finals berth, they basically sewed it up on their own anyway they would have even if Geelong hadn't have been so concerning and shit so yeah. you know good on them they're playing finals after a rough year I think that they oh, good. they oh, deserve good a Adelaide. lot of credit for what they've been through and they've performed remarkably well since and their forward line is very dangerous if anyone's winning it from outside the top four it's them or Richmond no <sighs> I think the only thin sauce about Adelaide is their midfield. I think their midfield can go missing at times, but apart from that, yeah, they do have a lot. Of, but yeah, they do have a lot of attacking weapons. The knock on them all year has been the defence because they've got a really young defence, like with guys like Lever and Hardigan and Brown. Lever's still better than fucking Cockatoo, mind you, but um, <laughs> they're inexperienced and they're just a little bit shaky. I mean, West Coast didn't really put into the sword, but obviously they definitely have the potential to with Kennedy and Darling so if they meet in a final you know if they meet Adelaide it'll be in front of the crowd too Hawthorne in Melbourne or West Coast in Perth you worry about how the defence is going to contain some of the big power forwards it's also like the Crows have always been one of those teams they've had a pretty solid list and the years they've been underwhelming the last couple of years prior to this one last two of Sanderson's reign it was actually hard to pinpoint what was wrong with them like they actually have a list that looks pretty good on paper but for whatever reason hasn't always stacked up. I'm sure the Port fans could tell you why. And this year it hasn't stacked up the whole way and there's been like, mitigating circumstances but this week it was doing everything you'd kind of think. No, they've played well, well this season. Me. I mean, they've had some yeah. major issues some ones that are really bad but on the whole I mean they're in the finals they're pretty dangerous when they play well so they could cause damage well their midfield's going to lack after the end of the season when danger comes to Geelong so but you're getting Henderson yeah. you don't have room in the salary cap Three and Scott so would. well they're going to clear the space Stephen Motlop's not going to play because he wants to go to a club that appreciates him and won't shove him out the door who yeah, wants to go to Geelong good. after what they showed on Friday fuck that I'm a teacher are you going to use your paddle boat right. as like a fucking sales pitch like, have a new boat when you sign I don't have a on. paddle boat anymore I've got a hydrofoil <laughs> just something else for you to crash this is the bit where he jumps on the Dangerfield recruitment bandwagon Dangerfield does craft. go to Hawthorne I would like you yeah. a hovercraft teach a hovercraft no, yes. I can get him back to Geelong in, yeah. in an hour and a half please, a teach, please teach tell us more tell us all about how Geelong are getting Dangerfield just keep talking about it it'll happen right yes we're going to get him we and will get him the Richmond fans think if they keep talking about Geelong going there then that'll happen you don't see the Herald Sun or the Age having a massive propaganda thing to, yeah, get Trawar or to get... Not like the Geelong Addy. You mean. Yeah, the Geelong Addy, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. our Geelong teams like, do, aren't yeah, based in some do. fucking backward hick town with their local fucking paper. Collingwood supporters don't read the paper anyway. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> oh, that was a good comeback teach. Can you just like, put that on replay? Let's, Shut up, bitch. Let's move on if we've got nothing else on the Crows. West Coast, Adelaide are impressive and once again, just about anyone one can win the flag this year except for Fremantle. Agreed. Fremantle is well. concerning. They can only well. beat shit teams. I think Port have more of a chance of winning the flag than Fremantle. <laughs> I think we do. I don't think that every team can win it. I think that you... No. I, th- I think the Dogs can definitely win it. I think no, the Dogs can. not play at Eddie Head Stadium. We can't win prelims, mate. <laughs> It'll be a massive <laughs> bribery just to win a prelim. Hey, maybe you run into Lowell North Choke or something. We can beat the Collars, that's for sure. We've knocked the Collars out three times in 
the last 20 years, so it's possible. There's your hoodoo. But we will come to Fremantle, because for once they scored 100 points. It only took Melbourne. It took them a while to get their first goal. Let's admit to that. They were a bit average. But we need to be positive about Melbourne. There's no yes, such thing as negativity. Positive. No, no negativity. In I mean, Viney played well. Max Gorn had a magnificent beard. Legend, he won was... the Supercoach final. <laughs> Bernie was very good. Jeffy Garland got Jeffy goals for the goals? Yep. <laughs> Jeremy Howe probably took a specky. Jack Watts wasn't useless. I mean, positive signs. That is a lie. He may have turned up. That's something. I'm going out on a limb here. I reckon the Purple Poofs have got an absolute chance to win the grand final. Oh, but shit. if they face the Hawks, oh. I'll go down in a blaze of glory. They can't kick goals against anyone who's half decent. The forward line is literally a I reckon, I reckon useless pavilage. Their forward line is like North's if it was just weight. Yeah. I reckon we'll see a, a derby prelim one way or another, and the only way Frio are beating fucking West Coast is like if... McGovern gets injured. No, if 20 more players on West Coast list get injured, and they're literally picking players 23 to 44 on their list. That's the only way Frio are going to beat them. Frio are going to pick players 23 to 44 on their list this week. Is that their age bracket? I mean, we've talked <laughs> enough about them because, well... They're boring. But yeah, and all they did was beat Melbourne. They didn't Whereas... even beat Melbourne in style like the dogs or Hawthorne. Yeah, so that's a positive for Melbourne. They didn't beat Melbourne in style. Melbourne managed to stop Fremantle skiing. And this was the first time that Melbourne has kicked more than six goals against the Dockers in six games. So their defence isn't even that good anymore. Mm. I was going to say, Jose, if you're listening, your team is boring as batshit. It's if terrible. He's listening, he'll be the first person to listen to it. <laughs> if you want to complain, proceed to email my personal email address at fuckoffjose at hotmail.com. People still use Hotmail in 2015. <laughs> I can't be fuck. I'm not making an actual email for that. It's a tricky sign from St Kilda footballers. Get a Gmail account cookie, you fucking weirdo. Let's move on. Well, the Giants sealed a season win for the X's. The sound of the mighty the Giants. Giants. They're 17 goals behind and they've played their last game that they should score in, so... <laughs> score in. 20 goals for the GWS. That's impressive. Carlton started with a bang again as well, which it's always great to see Carlton just fly out Was of the Was it a sausage exploding or... They were in front at halftime or something, and then GWS just went, yeah, nope, we're going <laughs> to run away with this game and get our biggest ever win, breaking the record of our second biggest win, which was also against you guys earlier in the year. That's how shit Carlton are. They scored 132 points, and they didn't have a single player that got over 30 touches. So you can be actually effectual and not touch it 45 times, Tom Rockley. <laughs> I mean, Cameron played very well. Fucking Seven Cameron. goals. Command's a fucking jet. That's really what needs to be said. Seven Trelaw, goals. Trelaw, 28 and thread. Why is he not the thread? How shit it, Carl. Because oh, well, we're trying to get the lid on our new recruit, so we're just not talking about him. Oh, if I were you, and like, if I were confident of Trelaw going to Collingwood, like I personally am confident about Dangerfield coming to Hawthorne, I'd be starting goo threads all about it, and, you know, huh. that's what you yeah. should be doing. Yeah, yeah. fucking. I, I would be. Show us your act- Stradamus. <laughs> The thing is that we've never actually managed to land a big fish that we were supposed to get. So until we do, I'm not starting a thread. This is every year we get put into this thing where, oh, yeah, Collingwood are after this person, this person. We've never landed one. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Collingwood sells yeah. papers. We, are not, we are not a destination club. No. I guess I'm just too used to being premature. No, I think we just get thrown into the conversation to drive the price up. Well, that used to be the thing. Now they drop mm. Hawthorne as a trade bait. Like, I noticed that in the week when someone linked Wingard to Hawthorne. It's like, Wingard's not going to Hawthorne. His manager just said that because Hawthorne's the new Collingwood. Mm. Link your player there. I get how any key forward used to get linked to Fremantle. It was like, that's but, a good way well, to get Well, they still do. Money. Fucking Dixon and all that are getting into <laughs> Fremantle. Dixon might and, get there, And though. they're going to probably end up with Jesse White or someone. <laughs> I think Dixon will be at Port. No, they get Jay Schultz. Schultz. They get Jay Schultz. Frio. Brendan Bolton stopped by uh, the Carlton game and, well, he was scowling. It didn't take him long to stop Brendan from smiling. Yeah, my sweepstakes, Fred, failed. Not even before didn't even last started. Week. Way to go, Carlton, you fucking cunts. But this may backfire on Carlton because they've appointed him to a salary deal. Is he shorter than you, Fifey? Probably, yeah. He's got such a squeaky voice. I hate coaching now that I'm at Carlton. <laughs> I don't understand. How does he how does he reach the barbecue? <laughs> they have a stool for him. They have very long tongs. But it is pretty funny that they've appointed him to a salary instead of a contract. Like Isn't it rolling one year deals? Yes, yeah, so it's heavily in favour of Carlton being able to sack him whenever they want without paying him out. But it also does leave the option open that if he does do alright and say Alistair Clarkson throws coaching in that he could fuck off back to Hawthorne if he really wanted to and take that job, which would be like that would be the ultimate poetic justice, wouldn't it? I reckon Bolton 
Tom's manager put in the one-year clause because he knows that job is toxic. So he says, look, I tried my best, but I didn't have the faith, blah, blah, blah. He'll get another job, easy peasy. Mm. Smart management. They just don't want to pay him out. After fucking paying out Ratten for the last year, Mick for the last year, and... They're still yeah, paying so... out girls from the 1990s, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> but it is very Carlton-esque that they could actually appoint a new coach, go through that entire process, and still find a way to kind of fuck it up. Like, it's got to be the worst vote of confidence in a coach you've ever seen. Just give him three years and guarantee that he's yeah, going to get fucking, yeah. hate to use the term, some clean air. Well, I hope the situation just... that Starbirds is talking about where he, like, gets a massive offer from another club, maybe like an Essendon or something, or Frio once Lion fucks off to North. <laughs> you know, Bolton, take a big money job somewhere else and leave Carlton in the lurch and we'll all continue to laugh at Carlton. He could join the X's. <laughs> <laughs> join the X's, Brendan. You know you want to. Pretty much. Let's move on. And Port have solidified their charge to ninth with a win over the Suns. Puff Puff. I think Nike would be fitting for Port, actually, to be honest, with all the puffing in preseason. Yeah, it's a year of what-ifs at Port, isn't it? I mean, if, if you're Starburns, you're just kind of thinking, uh, I mean, it's not going to be us, so anyone but us is fine. So... We haven't finished ninth in like six years. <laughs> we are now the team that doesn't win finals. Anything on Port versus Suns? Was there anything out of that game? We... Oh, no, I didn't even watch this game. No, I didn't. Uh, it was on the same well, time. Well, I mean, Richmond's. apparently uh, there was some Wasn't, there, wasn't there, at, there a bit of a uh, blue? It, there yeah. was a brawl at yeah. halftime or something, and that was very surprising because you've got a five-year-old franchise against a 20-year-old franchise, and you just don't expect clubs of that ilk to be passionate and punching on with each other so don't know what was going on there a bit too much passion for franchises you're saying yeah i mean fucking established 97 established 2010 i mean no one gives a shit you've got no history you fucking piss out poor clubs just <laughs> stay in the bottom 10 where you belong if there's nothing else on that we'll move on richmond won in the wet as i referenced before not a whole lot out of this game it was you know if we kick straight probably should have won by more but so be it wins a win in the conditions and it was good to actually play proper wet weather football in the conditions for once as we didn't do against melbourne didn't watch it what, what was it like uh Stubbins? well it was wet and slippery and they didn't try and over finesse you know there was a lot of off the ground kicks including the four in a row that ended in dustin martin's goal that was nice i've been there when it's been wet and slippery. That first half, you just fucking couldn't hit the side of a bar, though, and Essendon were right in it. But in the in the second half, you came out and had adjusted your game style well enough to be able to get a pretty easy win in the end. Yeah, it was. There wasn't much out of that apart from Courtney Dempsey in the last few minutes. Did a sling tackle or something like that. Slamming Delidio on his head. Yeah, so you sent so straight to the tribunal. Yeah, he fucking really, really slammed him in. Like it was mm. like I was surprised he got sent straight to the tribunal, mm. but clearly they're trying to make a stand. That was weird because there was one earlier that day in the Bulldogs North game and they paid a free kick and didn't report him and the action was much the same. It just must have been, the action was the same. It was just the force of the Dempsey one was obviously harder and Delidio had a, a neck injury by the end of the game and I think a lot of people are just kind of confused as to what the rule is, what's a free kick, what's a suspension because Schultz got off and Gibbs didn't and I'm confused. I don't know if anyone else is. Mm. What do you reckon, Starburns? Do you reckon he should go and for how, how long? Uh, he should get suspended, but direct to the tribunal is weird, I would have thought too. I think he should get suspended, but I have no idea how long he should get suspended for, just based mm. on precedent, because there isn't enough. I'll tell you what I will say, though, about that. Watching Essendon, they have a real decision to make because they, they got to name a captain next year. Presumably, Job's not going to take it. And the obvious front runner is Heppel. Heppel's not the guy. He's Tom Rockcliffe Mark II. He is Tom Rockcliffe Mark II. Front runner is a very good <laughs> description. And as much as it probably wouldn't be a great PR exercise to do it, but they need to give it to the cabbie basher because oh, he's actually... Oh, really? No, I would give it to Goddard because he is the, <laughs> he is the fucking spiritual de facto leader of that club anyway. So like, Points like tells him... Like what we did, yeah, you know, you just make it official. Oh, Goddard's about to enter his last year's contract, so we'll be winching bitch and ask to be captain in his new fucking contract, the twat. He should be made the captain. They've made him be the face of the club, like, in the media. He wasn't even one of the fucking ones that was injected. Why does he have to carry you cunts around? He drinks the Kool-Aid by the barrel. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) It's because he's a born leader, and he's already filling that role, so you may as well just give him the official responsibility. He was a born leader when he led his way out of 
Hey, he's learned from Nick Maxwell. He knows how to point and guard space. Nick Maxwell was a yeah. loyal one yeah. star premiership player. Because no one else would take him. The other option for Essendon's captain, I guess, is Carlisle because they might try and dangle that uh, carrot in front of him as part of the contract they offer. What about so Zaharakis? I mean, Zaharakis showed great courage in being scared of needles. <laughs> yeah, Jim and, said and he would be He's there. not a team player. He, he's on the he's way too out. Soft. Mm. Essendon, they kick him out. Oh, did you know what just fuck it make? Was it Corey with Sean McKernan captain? <laughs> Would all want to see that? Oh, uh, look, Ariel Steinberg gets my Fuck him, who, Nick Comer. Fuck him, who cares? Elliot Kavanagh. Jake Melksham. Oh, milkshake. <laughs> the milkshake. Yeah, make, make milk, Milksham your captain and then change your theme song to My Milksham Brings All the Boys to the Yard. <laughs> They're like, he's better than you. <laughs> Um, Definitely be their PR oh. slogan for next year. Let's move on to the last two games. We'll discuss these very briefly. The Hawthorne skied over the Bryans, which I think the only thing out of that game was just how ineffective Rockcliffe was, and they still got pummeled. Was there anything else to mention out of that game? No, no, don't no. even fucking talk about it. Hawthorne, <laughs> Dunstan oh. and Ruffy, 20 is buried. I guess the opposition says a lot there, doesn't it? But surprising, I guess, to see Gunston get 20. Oh, it's, it's not quite 20 and 3, but Liam Shields, 34 and 1, which is... Well, but, you know, 20 and 3, or get the fuck no, out. No, because, I mean, you've got Jasney gooing over fucking Aaron Hall, 31 and running. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, Liam Shields, 34 and 1, so, you know, fuck up. Beat that. Nothing else on that, Hawthorne. Brisbane. No. Typical Tassie, Florida. boring Tassie. Well, not boring, but like windy and. You should not talk about your home like that. No, I mean the Tassie games are always frustrating because of the wind, and so the first quarter happened did in it Brisbane. Well, against shit for three quarters. Well, it did actually because it turned in the last <sighs> quarter, and Brisbane were with the wind for three quarters. But in the first quarter, Brisbane were with oh. the wind, and they kicked four goals to our one with the wind, and so everyone on the main board was frothing and going like, "Oh, it's going to be an upset. Brisbane are going to." win and then we get the win in the second quarter and it's like fucking 10 goals to nothing okay that's i guess why tassie games are frustrating because you you know you're wondering for just a moment with the wind speaking of we'll move on to a game with no wind where the coal is put St Kilda away we were shit and they oh, were God. decent move on God. You let Kurt Tippett kick some more goals in, on the run in the final. Fucking infuriating. That useless blanket. He 23 that, He's, he's like, 23 the last two weeks. Kurt Tippett 20 it, and 3. Oh, it, God. That is no longer a relevant metric. We have to move the goalposts now <laughs> so that he can no longer be part of that club. It's okay. We were, tank, we were tanking. We were tanking. We're going to claim tanking. We didn't play Hugh Goddard on him because we showed pity. So we were tanking. It's okay. Yeah, you were fucking <laughs> shit. At all. Like, I watched that game. Your skills were just terrible. I try to hit up a 10, 15 minute kick. And it's always That's bouncing fun. in front of the leading player. We've already right. planning for well, Mad Monday. We're getting on the lines already. You're, you're already working out who you're going to set fire to. I know who else watched that game, Cookie, and that was King Bond. Why don't you tell us what you think about that guy? <laughs> He's a colossal... He is a fucking the Western Bulldogs version of Suze. In his mind, you can't use stats to judge a player. You have to watch him, which he says about Bont and Pally. I'm going, okay, yeah, I watched... Well, if you watch Bont and Pally, he's a gun. Yeah, and then I said, okay... Statistically, he's a gun. He didn't watch David Armitage play all season. He's like, oh, no, he's shit. Then I proved that Armitage has better stats than Bont and Pally, and he's like... He flip-flops his arguments 20 times in the space of five minutes. I've watched David Armitage, but, you know, it was a bit different to that. <laughs> I haven't really, but... <laughs> I, I want to watch it. So does Penal. Send it to me. <laughs> yeah, and you still haven't sent it to me. Come on. But yeah, King Bond is a complete wanker. He can go suck a big bowl of dicks. Jason Holmes had a case of the second game blues, I think. Yeah, but really, he probably got destroyed by Pike, who is a better Ruckman. As much as he didn't have a great game, he would be Geelong's number one Ruckman. Yeah, well, I mean, he's still, he's still a long-term prospect worth persevering with, but, it, I mean... He's a mean, long cook with him. you got to just let it go on. Nice. Slow barbecue. She's a carton player. <laughs> Let's move on to the talking points, and we'll begin with, well, Ross Lyon wants to rest players, and apparently he needs permission from the AFL to do it, which, funnily enough, as much as this is ridiculous, he shouldn't need permission. Well, he got the tick off. As if they weren't going to do it. He'll list, them, he'll list them all as blue, like Sheedy used to do. Managed. He, he's General thought. General spudness in Zach Dawson's case. You expect him to do it. I mean, he did it two years ago against St Kilda, which produced quite a funny performance. You know, though, the thing about this is, considering he wants to rest so many players, 
players. He must be shattered that they got rid of Colin Sylvia. So they're one player short that they can actually rest. They could rest 12 instead of 11 if they had Sylvia still there. But, well, they I mean, could play a 12 year old. It won't matter. So if Freo don't play a youth teach, they'll get a 42 year old. Yeah, no, Freo don't have youth. It's not going to work. He's not going to fucking win the flag anyway because he's Ross Lyon. So, I mean, it's not a good look. But, I, I mean, it'd be very hard to see the AFL actually doing anything about it. Like, because as the coach and selection committee, whatever, you're entitled to use the 44 players on your list. So there shouldn't be rules against it. But at the same time, it's not a good look if you have a game that essentially is being tanked by a free man or... So as long as you're in the top eight, you can tank. Yeah, well, you, you're not actually losing, losing. You know, you're probably still not going to lose anyway. But I guess from Port's perspective, it would get them a, a lower draft pick, essentially, because they basically have a guaranteed win, whereas if they lost, they would probably drop below GWS. So it's kind of affecting them. And hey, as we said before, this is good because Geelong will finish 12th. And that'll be the fun. lowest we've ever finished of any club. Oh. Just remember, Teach, most of the time, 12th was only the lowest. I I know, I know. Joke. That's not oh, joke. That's I, I, I get that, mate. <laughs> Let's move on to the next talking point. We will come back to the Paul Ruse and the positivity. And Well, Ruse blames everyone for everything. Now it's the fans. Oh. My God, man. When your team is really shit, don't you expect your supporters to have a bit of a moan? But he really? just at every turn, like, put off that they even are his team. It's never we, it's them. Oh. Melbourne's is a fucking retirement fund. He should just come out and say, he, he, we know he did it for the money. He's a money-grubbing whore. Oh, no shit. Everybody does their job for the money, Craig. Yeah, but I mean, you know, most people everyone. do it for something as well as the money. Whereas, like, if, you, if you're an AFL coach... You you do it because you love the sport and you love coaching and you love taking over a group of young men and trying to make them grow. I like uh, taking over a group of young men. I'm not coaching. <laughs> and, make, and making them grow. A group? Yep. Mm. It's a numbers so game. You do coaching because you love coaching, but Bruce doesn't appear to have any passion and he just sees the dollar signs. Yeah, agreed. He's got about as much passion as Melbourne's players. The succession plan that he's put up just doesn't come off well at all. Like, as what Pena was saying, you know, he doesn't have like the true passion to like you know completely stick it out. You're saying he's already checked out. Pretty I much. Don't, I don't think he ever checked he's... out. Right now, Ruse is statistically a bigger failure than Malthouse was at Carlton, and he's got one year to try and reverse that trend because at least uh, Malthouse was checked in for that first year. Yeah, he was because he was trying to stick it up, Eddie. Not so much caring about the club. Ruse did it for money. <laughs> Malthouse did it to stick it up, Eddie. I remember in the early noughties, like 0102, we were really fucking shit and we just used to go to the games and go oh well we're shit but yeah. we're going to improve and then um, you got that fucking bullshit father son rule to your advantage I and then all of a sudden you were good just because the 48% came from Hawthorne and you didn't get any yeah just because well, then they also got dodgy umpire and calls to go their way in vital moments yeah, in fucking... oh, <laughs> don't get fuck you idiots but we came good and it was great well you think Melbourne will under ruse <sighs> no I don't actually <laughs> well, then why are you saying it? Okay, Teach, here's the difference in Melbourne. Just, because he's trying to be long. positive. That's, that's the that's MO what they of the need day. To do. Even though it's tough for them right now, they just got to stick fat, keep turning up. Okay. The snow's good. There's new Range Rovers coming out. I mean, that's exciting for Melbourne supporters. It's, it's cricket good. season, it's so you can use your MCC membership. <laughs> Let's move on to Essendon's coaching panel. And, well, straight after Carlton appoint a coach, John Warsfold's all of a sudden interested again, and maybe he might end up at Essendon, your chemist at Essendon. But Morgs, you noticed something interesting about Essendon's coaching panel. I did. I found it was very entertaining. So there was Xavier was on it and some other dickheads and you know, Jennifer was on there and Brad Sewell. What the fuck is Brad Sewell doing on their coaching panel? Taking revenge. Like, <laughs> <laughs> revenge is a dish we, best served cold. Well, we sent Mark Williams to Essendon. That worked really, out really well for them. We sent Robson, was it, to Essendon? That worked out really well for them. We took your CEO. We took your coach. We took your... <laughs> we took your spot in the finals. And then that guy cancels his account. Very nice. And now we're sending Saul <laughs> to Essendon to make him pick, I don't know, shit.
Sheedy, Mick Malthouse. Who will he pick? I'm just waiting with bated breath. Mark Neal. Just make Craig Bellamy the coach. I mean, they can't do any worse, really. Why would he go to Essendon when he can stay at Storm? Yeah, oh, no. Jesus. Wouldn't that be awkward when Matty Lloyd's walking down the corridor there and walk past <laughs> each other? Ooh. Putting in his application. Oh, sorry, I accidentally took your head off, mate. What if one of Matthew's brothers applies for the job? I don't think he's going to nope. get it. Lloyd's not welcome back at Essendon. They don't want anything to do with him because he's got too much association with Caro. Also, <laughs> anything else on that? No, very entertaining. Good trolling by Sully. He's infiltrated the enemy camp. I like it. It's a very Collingwood thing to do. Let's hope he escapes without a rearranged face. Or any injections. We have a few questions, so we'll go. First one, this one's from Porkdo4. If AFL teams were biscuits, what teams would they be? That's a very, very good question. And I reckon that Geelong would be an iced Vovo because it would look nice and tasty, but it would be shit. And it's an old mm. people biscuit. Yes. I would say we're the sprinkles biscuits. Looks good, but it's soft as right. shit. And kids like right. it. Port Pufferfish are those cheap imitation Tim Tams they sell in fucking Coles that's pretending to be, you know, the real deal but isn't and that's Port Adelaide pretending to be a club that's 140 <laughs> years old when they're really just 20 years old hello Port uh, Melbourne we scotch fingers really old but they're dry as fuck <laughs> I reckon Geelong are tiny teddies because you always get that one fucking tiny teddy in the bag that like got fucking mutated while it was being made and now it's like two or three teddies stuck together that's the Tom Hawkins and Geelong is the bag Frio <laughs> won't be any cookies because they don't have any cups to be dipped into Count oh, no. I think they're a barbecue shape. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon nor for hundreds and thousands cookies because that's in relation to the age of their players. <laughs> and not the amount of money they have. Western Bulldogs can be our dog biscuits because fuck it. I thought we were more of like a Marie biscuit. You dunk it in your tea and you're about to pull it out and the arse just comes out of it. I feel like <laughs> I was choking in the prelims. Right, you get to that point where you're just about to enjoy and it just crumbles. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, are there any biscuits that you <laughs> dip into bath water instead of tea? Tea is, tea is just dirty water after all. This one's from Smeghead, and once again on the theme of food, can Sydney rise like a Mentos cola fountain in the final series and do some damage, or will they just evaporate into a sticky mess? Sticky mess. Sticky mess. Sticky no, mess. No way. And Jack Attack is going to have to clean that sticky mess up. <laughs> Yeah, sticky mess. I think we've lost Morgs. Let's ask this question while she's not here, because I guess this is more about her than directed to her. So this is from Big Joe D. Are you as hashtag concerned as I am that lately the Bay has become a personal plaything for a certain pair to flaunt their budding relationship? Well, I'm disgusted, disgusted that Divi Blues and Subaru are using the Bay in such a way. It's not a dating oh, site. Just... It's a bit embarrassing, guys. Like, you serious? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a dating site, as people have had to spell out to Bombers 2003 numerous occasions. Guys, if you, if you well, need to get some, go and download Tinder or something. Like, we don't need to see this on Bigfooty. To be fair, as bad as Divi Blues and Subaru have been, Morgs and Dan have nearly been <laughs> at that level. <laughs> There was very much tension between them a few weeks ago on this pod on this podcast. Oh, please. Anyone else you'd like to accuse me of having tension with? To all the people out there, did you really think there was that many North posters on Bigfooty? They're all the fucking same. We make the Bender jokes about how everyone sees Elias, but all the North posters are just three people. There's Suze and there's Dan and there's Teffy posting from prison. <laughs> And then, and then there's Rory. Yeah. You finished yet, you cockhead? You fucking finished cunts? You fucking finished cunts? Whatever. Fuck off, big joke. You got a rebuttal? What? I don't need a rebuttal. It's not about me. It was about Divi Sue's. Divi Subaru's. Oh, whatever. Make me a sandwich. At least oh, they no. eat nutritional food and not the fucking Happy Meals that you two chow down. Hot chips. Ha- fucking Happy Meals, hot chips, and strawberry Big M's. I mean, that can't be good for you. Just wait, wait. I have a question for the listeners of this vlogcast. What are Frio celebrations now that they've actually won a trophy that's not a fucking derby one? Maybe we can make that the poll. Do we want to offer ideas? The poll needs options. Well, I mean, they could chow down on some fine, uh, dick. <laughs> You've made that joke you've, three you've times. You've actually sp- broken a lot of our dick tonight, for me. Read if you watch Madness this. first. <laughs> This week on the Bay, Vlog of the Week. Well, I think it's a pretty good segue considering we were just talking about posters who, you know, just had to make it the Bay their play thing. So Divi? Yeah, Divi Blues and Subaru. And I think they're the front runners for Vlog of the Week for mine. No, so. back one out. Fucking dickhead. <laughs> he needs to go down. He's not an untouchable? No, he's a cunt. He's going down. <laughs> it's got to be Divi Blues, mate. Yeah. Fucking lots of West 
Hashemites are making a case for themselves because the amount of shit fighting this week has just been off the charts. A for off the charts, of oh, course. Nice. But you can't go past Divi Blues because he just went, ugh. Full Suze mode. Mm. Thread of the week. I want to nominate, and this is from a poster called A Cut Above, who I think you all may remember as the Bay's favourite 48% of Bosk. I'd want to nominate that thread where he tricked Speyer amongst a few other posters into believing that Dangerfield had re-signed for six years with a bunch of fake tweets, and I thought that was very clever. It was a nice way for him to return. Better than a self-indulgent wank thread. He managed to bait EIMM, and, you know, <laughs> he's not the first person to uh, bait EIMM with some fake tweets no I, I, i'd go with that that was pretty clever i read it and now i thought what the fuck have... and i went on to the news this week yeah the win is sealed and the celebrations are rolling the, in the rockcliffe thread as, as i mentioned before yes yeah, very... i liked you don't know jack's positivity yeah, paul ruse thread that's a very good thread as well i found the thread from the main board which is certainly the best main board thread of the week it was which team which team has the most penetrative <laughs> game style <laughs> and it was full of puns about deep penetration and St Kilda jokes and no wonder you liked it. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, and so, yeah no, no so did you Thorpe, like mind you. Oh yeah, I, I joined in on it. It was good, good fun. Yeah, but she's a woman. <laughs> you don't have to be a woman to enjoy a bit of penetration. I mean, <laughs> I, so, no, I mean, we're the one ones doing it. They're the ones receiving it. So, you know, it's something we all can enjoy. Yes. Yeah, so which one do we want to give it to out of those? It's a tough one, actually, this week. Let's go boss. That was a good trial. Yeah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. We actually don't see that happen. Yeah, go, yeah. Someone actually fools people. I think um, boss it is. Last week's poll, MRP verdicts, 0% said correct on Hodge, correct on Fife. 8.1% said correct on Hodge, too light on Fife. 21. 6% said too light and easy on Hodge, too light on Fife. 40.5, which was the winner, said too light and easy on Hodge, correct on Fife. And 29.7% said Jack Watson, easy giant mystic dildo to work this out. That poll was fucking rigged. I'm Where sorry, that is too... ridiculous. <laughs> Where was the too harsh on Hodge option? Like, he should have got off. How does the mystic dildo lose? Because <laughs> it's a fucking rigged poll. He should have got four, you stupid cunt. You know that. <laughs> he should have got nothing. Oh. No, How is you... the legal case going? <laughs> I've always should have got six weeks for being a turd. Let's go to the previews, <laughs> and oh, the match of the round this week is probably the Friday night. It's the one with the most significance anyway now that DeLong are out of the finals race. Uh-huh. Richmond versus Lowell North at Etihad. Richmond well, just win this... by 40. We're going to kick him in the head. This would be really, really good, this game. I'm going with the Tigers by a kick, so five points. Going with Lowell North. I think Lowell North's record against Richmond is uh, pretty good, and it's uh, Eddie had also, so he'll probably come in their advantage. I think uh, Richmond will win. They're just better than North on their way to a grand final. <laughs> the week. Just doing what you did last week at fucking West Coast, you can't. <laughs> I'm going for North. Oh, oh, what a surprise. Oh, it's a fucking 50-50 thing. I'm picking one of the two. <laughs> of course, oh, well, you guys are dicks. Geelong versus the Crows. Cookie didn't go. Didn't he? Oh, I yeah, because he just got his body. list where he's ticking off. <laughs> Checklist. <laughs> Set it right at the start, Teach. Making a list. Check it. Geelong versus the Crows. I'm just going to say, Chi Chi Claws will be very scary. Crows, obviously. Crow go stick to bounce high again. Crows just smash the shit out of Geelong. Crows, Crows by 10 goals. Make it Geelong 100 points. Well, I fucking hope that Adelaide beat us by 10 goals. Um, That's a good attitude to have. Yeah, what a nice way to send off your club champions. You're, just, you're as bad as the club. Ah, Took fuck them. I've been shit. This so. is why they have to stop hearing. I hope Paddy Dangerfield is listening to this and he hears how the fucking cheer squad leader turns on their star players once they have a few bad games. Hey Stevie J, those three premierships, fuck that, get out. Yeah. <laughs> you don't deserve anything. He should have gone last year. <laughs> fuck him. Nah, I hope we lose. So we, we drop a couple of runs and we finish 12th. You're a shit bloke. Mm, that's awful. Yeah, we can get fucked. <laughs> Maybe you can kidnap Dangerfield whilst he's there, Teach. It's the only way he's going to come to Geelong after seeing the way that they treat their superstars. Put him in a barrel, Teach. You have a hydro for you're like a James Bond villain now, like the Disco yeah. Valente. Are you going to go to this game? No. No, no fucking way. You can get down to fucking Geelong and watch the game. No problem. What's your excuse? Take the train at, down. That highway, it's so fucking boring. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. No, you, no you, you, I'll pay that. It is so fucking boring. I've As been, somebody who lives on it, it's boring. I've been down there more than a hundred times. Okay, what kind of freeway slash highway have you been on 
one that isn't boring. No, this is the most boring, straightest. Oh, it's rubbish. There is nothing interesting along the way. Well, there's nothing interesting at the end of the road either. <laughs> Does anyone give the Bryans a chance against the dogs, despite this whole interstate thing? Yeah, I give them. Yes. <laughs> No, not even. Oh. A 1% chance with a 1% margin of error. Dogs by 15 goals. Four oh, dogs. Doggies to steamroll into the finals. Brisbane you know. could start now and they still wouldn't win. No, because Rockcliffe would be kicking it sideways the whole time, waiting. <laughs> waiting for the for someone to be a forward. Like our Port lost to the bye. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Port, they're playing Peel Thunder. So we were asking what Fremantle's minor premiership celebrations will look like. And it's something like this. Without further interruption, let's celebrate and suck. Some dick. <laughs> and, what the fuck? And Fremantle are going to be sucking a big bag of dicks on the weekend as they roll out. The I love how Penal had that queued up. It's like in his favourites. His ring time. <laughs> they're going to be rolling out the fucking B team and they're going to be sucking a big bag of dicks and they're going to lose by 100 points. When you play that, do you wear a pair of shiny gold underpants and dance around your lounge room? I skip all the pleasantries and I just go straight to the chase. I'm wearing nothing right now. <laughs> Port to win. Port to win. The only thing that will stop Port from winning uh, ninth this year is Melbourne from sucking a big bag to dicks that Eddie had also. Port for me. Port. Does anyone give Carlton a chance against Hawthorne considering Hawthorne are probably going to be resting a few too? I don't give them a... Oh, oh, you're kidding, aren't you? They don't have enough chance to beat the fucking Axes this week. They will not score 52 points. They will they score 40. They wouldn't beat Box Hill. There are a few players who are really on the fringe of the side. Some of our, our younger players who actually did... I complained last week and we actually played some youth last week against the Bryans. So we'll do the same against Carlton, no doubt. And the only thing that will be a battle is can we beat them by more than 138 points, which is what we beat them by last time and I reckon we might because there's a few players who are really playing for spots in finals so they'll go 100% yeah, oh, serious answer. By a bloody well yeah my serious answer was we'll win by more than 138 points so that <laughs> tells you how fucking low I think of Carlton I think so low of them I didn't even scoff at your suggestion <laughs> Carlton yeah, fans no. should all rock up to this game because this is going to be one of the last Saturday games they play for a very long time <laughs> enjoy Sundays next year you cunts and fuck off from Friday nights Colas versus <laughs> Suns, does anyone give the Suns a chance? No, no, no. chance whatsoever. Is this the worst oh, round wait, ever? Wait, wait, everyone, if Gold Coast beats Sydney and the Dogs finish fourth, I will seriously buy a Gold Coast membership next year. I'll do it. Wow. Uh, we'll hold you to that, pups. Hold me to it. That's a lot more reasonable of a bet than the one fucking Divvy Blues made where he has to fucking run naked through the streets of Melbourne. <laughs> no, he was just burying his ass. I'm going to be yeah, there to Nobody it. wins out of that. Bosk will win. It would be glorious if the Colas <laughs> somehow missed the four on the back of losing this, but just can't see it happening. Fuck, I, I want Sydney to win this so they finish fourth and go out in straight sets. That also would be very funny. The, the teams are going out in straight sets. Last well, week, you're going out in straight sets. Now they're going out in straight sets. He doesn't have a giant mystic dildo to the, figure the this out. The bad thing it is... <laughs> Fremantle are free man, free playing Sydney and you've got like the worst two top four teams in living memory which is Fremantle and Sydney and they can't both go out in fucking straight sets one of them has to win unless they just keep playing extra time and eventually the AFL says you know fuck it it's please Saturday. no one scored a goal it's Saturday afternoon it's still <laughs> nil nil you know you've been playing for 18 hours we give up fucking abandoned match we'll give Port the spot in the finals instead fuck that was rough that's a teach story. <laughs> oh, fuck off, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> West Coast versus St Kilda. <laughs> We've got no fucking chance. We're going to get smashed by 100. West Coast. It doesn't even have a bearing on really anything, this result, anyway. Kennedy to give us one last Dexas troll by outscoring Carlton this week. He will. He'll probably get 10 goals. Put your money on it. Well, he could get, like, fucking four goals and still outscore Carlton <laughs> just based on the, out their last game against us. That's just, just play the youngsters. We lose, we lose. Who gives a shit? We're on holiday already. Bring out the dwarves. <laughs> Bring out the dwarves and school girls. Melbourne versus the Giants. Oh, Giants. this is the worst round I've ever <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Really? This Giants will win. It's all a bunch of yeah, who gives a fuck. There'll be no fans there for Roos to blame, though. Nah, uh, Melbourne will turn up next week because that's what they fucking do. Nah, it's a daddy hat. It's not a daddy hat. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, yeah, Giants. MCC members. <laughs> no, won't be there. Will this be the lowest Eddie had crowd of all time? I think it Probably. will. It was like 14,000. This could break some of the Giants' worst crowds at fucking Skoda. Oh, but they don't, they <laughs> don't tell you the real crowd size at Skoda. Hey, well, it's not the NRL. They stand at the front and give away free tickets of fucking lies. Giants by... 
their 10 goals, and that's being generous to Melbourne. Yeah. No. Giants play for North, yeah. It depends how much they want it. They don't need to want it. The other team's gone. Collingwood versus Essendon, last game of the home and away season. Collingwood has smashed the shit out of Essendon for one last lull for the season. Mm. Oh, beating Essendon in September. How delicious. Collingwood by a mile. Yeah, Collingwood just. Essendon, Essendon will be brave this time. Essendon aren't brave, they're drug cheats. Collingwood are always brave. Yeah, Collingwood to be brave and win by a lot there. Yeah, Collingwood to be brave, Essendon to win. Aww. Oh, come on. The other one. <laughs> Collingwood the bravest loss of the season. No, that's just stupid. That's silly, Fluffy. <sighs> okay, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. During the week, I went and found a mystic dildo <laughs> and it told me Essendon was going to win. Was it in a well, shape of a dolphin? No. I didn't borrow yours. I, it well, wasn't mine. I just Googled translucent <laughs> dildo and the dolphin came up. Well, uh, speaking of Essen versus Collingwood, none of this dildo bullshit you guys are disgusting, by the way. <laughs> I don't know who would even think of that. Ugh. And <laughs> I hope Fletcher plays and gets a send-off he deserves. And, it, and if Fletcher does play, then I would almost want Essendon to win. Almost. But they're still a fucking pack of drug cheats and fuck them. They send their veterans off in style, don't they, Penal? Oh, they're better than Geelong about it. I mean, fucking Geelong. It always comes back to fucking Geelong. <laughs> fucking cunt. Right. Shooting fish in a barrel, that is. All right, so this was the podcast for the final home and row round of the season. Starburns joined by Morgs. Farewell. Go, you pups. See you later. Teach. Bye for now. Cookson. Remember to tune in next week, Floggos. And Penal. Toodles. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>